Hey there, I'm Kyla. Welcome to my channel where I talk about the stock market and the economy, amongst other things. Mind is a barrel, loaded clips in my guns tucked. Literally stupid up in the booth. I do dumb. Today we are going to be doing a piece about the reverse repo market. This was highly requested. <laughs> um, because everybody, of course, wants to hear about reverse repos. Like <laughs> it's super fascinating. Okay, so just as a like a full disclosure. I studied economics and, and finance and data analytics in college, but definitely I'm not a reverse repo expert. I sat on a credit desk, but didn't ever kind of get into the weeds of bond valuation, unfortunately. So this is from what I've gleaned from other people and I linked their names in the Substack piece that it accompanies my video. I always have a piece accompanying my videos if you prefer the written word over the video word. So yesterday was June 9th. Yesterday, 59 counterparties, which is a lot of counterparties, number one, <laughs> took about half a trillion dollars at the Fed's fixed rate reverse repo facility. Half a trillion, that's a lot of money. What does that mean, Kyla? And I'm gonna walk through each thing step by step. So if it gets too basic, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna walk through it step by step. Just, like the key takeaway at the very beginning here is that the reverse repo facility helps keep the market afloat. Fed, there's a lot of liquidity in the market right now, and I'm gonna explain all this, but there's a lot of liquidity in the market right now because of all the QE that the Fed did uh, to keep the market afloat during the pandemic. Banks and money market funds are basically just awash with cash. And so they're parking all that over at the central bank because they're like, yo, we just have too much money. But because they're able to park cash over in the server's repo facility, that's going to keep short term rates from going negative, which is really what the Fed is like fighting against right now. The question here is like, well, what does all that mean? <laughs> what are you talking about at this present moment? Well, to begin with, reserves. So the concept of re reserves. Reserves are cash balances that banks hold to meet the Fed's required reserves regulations. So basically the Fed's like, yo, you got to keep some stuff in your reserves. So just in case anything does happen. So banks will hold reserves in order to meet the Fed's regulations. Fed has the job really of setting rates, but they don't necessarily go out into the market and do that. They more so create a price corridor with the RRP rate as the floor and the um, I O rate, then the interest rate on reserves rate, rate that Fed will pay to depository institutions like banks, this place where people can transact it. Basically, you have your reserves and then you have your rates. Reserves themselves, so these electronic cash balances, are created in main key ways that I'm going to talk about. First off, the Fed asset purchases. So the Fed is doing a really good job at this right now. Uh, they bought a lot of assets during the bonds during the pandemic to keep the markets alive. And so, for example, when the Fed buys treasuries, an asset. They swap reserves for that asset. So the bank gets the reserves, the Fed gets the asset, uh, that creates reserves in the system. And the other way is through the TGA drawdown. So the Treasury General account is owned by the U.S. Treasury, but it sits on the Federal's reserves balance sheet as a liability. The Treasury borrowed a lot of money <laughs> in order to pay for the fiscal support during the pandemic, which caused the TGA balance to go up. There's two things that are going on. They want to refinance their debt to take advantage of the ultra low interest rates, and they also want to cut down their cash balance uh, because the debt ceiling is coming and they've got to cut down uh, before that hits in July. And so basically the whole thing with them is like, we've issued so many bills, hashtag stimulus, uh, and they want to take advantage of these ultra low rates and also get stuff out of their balance or out of their account before they, the debt ceiling hits. So the Fed will take on that cash because when the TGA balance decreases, which is what it's doing right now, the reserves will increase to balance it out, you know, assets, liabilities, that equation always has to be equal. Uh, that key accounting equation drop in the TGA, which is what's happening, will come with a rise in bank reserves. So reserves increase through the Fed conducting QE. So banks get a lot of reserves. Also, reserves increase because the TGA is booting cash out of its system. All right, cool. But what that is quantitative easing? How the Fed conducts quantitative easing, we talked about this a little bit earlier with like, how do they create reserves? They buy bonds from banks and credit those banks with reserves. But banks are like, whoa, and this is not enough yield for us, guy. It's only 10 basis points. Like, well, who do you think we are? And they don't want to hold it. They don't want to hold those measly reserves on their balance sheet. Come on, they're banks here. 
And so reserves basically help them with the regulatory requirement at like a very, very high level. That's about it. It doesn't really give them any, any juiciness. It doesn't make their day better. <laughs> Nobody really wants reserves after a certain point. And so when that happens, that can, that can push money market rates, which are short-term debt investments, down below zero, which is the exact opposite of what the Fed is trying to do. They don't want any rates below zero. That's why they're, that's why they're doing QE and, and trying to keep things afloat. It's like, we have to keep things going. So the issue is reserves, oh my gosh, like reserves are becoming so cheap. Money market yields might fall below zero. What is a Fed to do? Enter the RRP. Enter the RRP. This is a facility, think of it like a parking garage or a drain. People, mainly these money market funds that operate in the short-term debt investment place, can park their money overnight with the Fed at the RRP rate, a tantalizing 0%. This makes the RRP rate, and thus 0%, the floor for, for money market rates, it makes it the floor because it's like, okay, we can we can transact at exactly 0%. We just have to go to, over to the RRP. I'm sorry about the hands, by the way. <laughs> RRP! <laughs> and the RRP does three main things. It keeps markets functioning. So QE, there's a lot of QE going on and RRP kind of makes it effective per se keeps things afloat. It also manages rates, so it keeps short-term rates down, prevents a lot of balance sheet pressure at the banks, which is like the last thing that they want. This will unload their excess into money market funds, and then that they'll unload that into the RRP. It also reduces reserves, allows the QE juices to keep on flowing because it reduces the amount of reserves in the system. So those are the three main things. Basically, the Fed's like, hey, Park your money with us at a 0% rate <laughs> so we can keep on doing QE. It'll help you and it'll help us. Deal. The Fed really loves QE. They love it so much. <laughs> uh, they're doing 120 billion of it a month. <laughs> with no signs of stopping. What QE does is it creates additional reserves. via yeah, QE purchases, right? So they'll buy bonds, get reserves, right? In the banking system. On top of that, the treasury general account is running down, which creates more reserves. And it needs to get even lower so it doesn't get squashed out by the debt ceiling. And so the Fed's like, okay, like we'll just park everything over in the RRP and that way we can just keep on doing QE. PGA is continuing to decrease. The Fed is continuing to do their 120 billion in QE. People have a lot of savings. Money market funds are basically awash with liquidity. We saw the CPI print June 10th today this morning, 5% baby. Oh yeah. Money needs a home. QE has created a lot of cash in the system. I'm just gonna keep on repeating that. And a lot of the cash is looking for a safe investment. Because of the demand for safe investments, repo rates were pushed really low. <laughs> and as an alternative, people can just park their money at the RRP at 0%. That's from the Fed guy, that concept. To keep an eye out for and sort of like, okay, how could this get bad? It's like, if there's too much liquidity and not enough places to park it, or how, if the RRP, and I don't think this is quite possible, but if the RRP gets overextended somehow, that's when negative yields would become a real worry. And that's why RRP is so important. So then the other question would be like, <laughs> does it get even bigger than this? <laughs> Market mutual funds are basically swamped with deposits. And one way to alleviate that pressure on them, how much cash they're kind of like trying to process through, one way to alleviate that, right, would be the Fed raising the RRP rate. There are, of course, consequences to that decision. It could decrease market stability, like literally everything does lately, uh, and also make things a little bit more expensive for the Treasury and the Fed. It could also, this is from Rishi, they could also do more bills, issuance, SLR, exemptions for banks, Operation Twist, which is where the Fed uses the proceeds from their sales on short-term treasuries to buy long-term treasuries, put downward pressure on long-term interest rates, or they could just end QE. <laughs> Don't tell the Fed about that one. <laughs> Don't tell them it's taper time already. And you know, the thing is, if we didn't have RRP at this point, we, we need it, right? Like there's just so much cash in the system. And if there wasn't this RRP place to go and park it, reserves would push yields down well below 0%, which is the exact opposite of what the Fed wants, once again. <laughs> so the big question is like, okay, Fed, like is the Fed paying attention to this? Does the Fed kind of know what's going on here? You know, the Fed knows, the Fed's aware. Mm -hmm. As Fed guy said, Post Basel III, the banks don't rely on money markets anymore, so there's not a lot of funding to lose. The Fed's really unconcerned. There was a Wall Street Journal piece about this. The system is working exactly as designed. It's working really... Okay, this is a quote. <laughs> so I'm going to read it word for word for you. <laughs> the system is working exactly as designed. It's working really well. And the fact that funds are flowing between the banking system and our overnight reverse repos. This is kind of how we would expect that to happen, <laughs> given the level of money coursing through 
short-term markets. So they're aware. The system's working. Things are firing on all cylinders here, draining liquidity, controlling rates. Uh, and the question is, are they going to increase it even more? Like allow counterparties, right now it's at 80 billion. Are they going to allow them to use the RUP system even more? Uh, because funds definitely have even more money coming in. And it seems like there's, you know, it can go upwards for a while. Uh, and funds, it's going to hit 1 trillion, which is kind of bizarre. Right now it's at 500 billion. You know, the current pace of QE, it'll definitely hit by 1 trillion uh, by year end, which is pretty crazy. But am I saying in this video, we have a couple of factors. The Treasury general account is paying down. The Fed wants to keep on doing QE and wants to keep rates from going negative. RRP is a tool to allow them to do that. They use it as a drain for reserves because money market mutual funds have so much cash. Market somewhere. And that's not, it, like, none of this is inherently bad, right? Like, it's just market systems. Excess is always bad, in my opinion, but it's case scenario. I've read it a couple of different places. Worst case scenario seems to be that rates go negative. Uh, and then funds close to new investors. So kind of like that side of the market shuts down and goes insane. Fed would raise rates probably before then. Could be the risk of too much liquidity, which the Fed does need to be cautious about. Funny thing is that two months ago, there was no, nobody was using the RRP. Now everybody is on the path to 1 trillion. Fed has created quite the spot for itself within the stock market. I, I made this image. <laughs> Because I'm an artist. So you got your reserves, it's the water, and then the drain is the RRP. And then I think the Brita filter would be QE, because like, okay, every all like all the water, all the reserves, whatever, all the money goes into the Brita filter and the Fed like filters it out, does QE. And the actual filter is keeping rates above zero percent. That's our financial system. A jug of water. <laughs> Just as a I'm not an expert here. We're learning together. Uh yeah. So this was a shorter video. As always, if you have thoughts, comments, questions, concerns, feedback, please leave it below. If you prefer this shorter style, let me know that too. Um, everything I do is has a question mark at the end of it. This was fun for me. I love, like I'm a huge monetary policy nerd. I love it. Thank you for listening. If, if you'd like, subscribe. I talk about the stock market. I do weekly data updates usually. I'm going to do more explainer videos like this once I a little bit more of that sweet time in my pocket <laughs> not money actual time like <laughs> 24 hours in the day is not enough for me anyway if you like this video if you like people rambling about stock market ideas uh feel free to subscribe hit that like button um and i will see you all on monday of next week uh, with my weekly market update and weekly market look ahead and be on the lookout for my cryptocurrency options market piece that will be my next youtube video as well after my market update. So yeah, thanks for listening. Have a good day and...